This is Cosmic News. Welcome along, my friends, to another edition of Cosmic News. Coming up in this week's broadcast, another whistleblower has come forward claiming he spent 17 years on planet Mars on a secret military base protecting space colonies. Plus, a warning goes out that Planet X Nibiru is closing in on Earth and startling explanation of global events as Nibiru is set to fly by Earth with the Anunnaki activating ancient stargates. Okay, into this week's news. This first report originates from BeforeIt'sNews.com and XO News. Title, Whistleblower claims he spent 17 years on Mars at a secret military base protecting civilian space colonies, secret space station on Mars. A new whistleblower has come forward to claim that he spent 17 years on Mars serving at a secret military base whose main mission was to protect five civilian space colonies secret space station on Mars. Captain K said that the Mars Defense Force recruits personnel from different military services. He claims that he was recruited from a covert branch of the US Marine Corps called Special Section. Captain K is currently seeking documents to verify his incredible experiences and for now offers his testimony as evidence of a breakaway human civilization based on Mars. His testimony is consistent with the claims of other whistleblowers who have previously come forward to reveal secret events on Mars. Captain K's testimony reveals that the main human colony on Mars is called Ares Prime, which is located inside a crater. Ares Prime serves as the headquarters for the Mars Colony Corporation. According to Captain K, the air is breathable on the surface of Mars and the temperature could be warm at times. He claims that there are two indigenous species on Mars, both of which are highly intelligent. One of these was a reptilian species that were very aggressive in defending its territory. The other was an insectoid species that was equally capable of protecting its territory. He said that indigenous Martians are not particularly interested in expanding their territory, only maintaining it. Captain K said that as long as the Mars Defense Force and Mars Colony Corporation did not encroach on the territory of the indigenous Martians, there would be stable relations. After serving 17 years of a 20-year tour of duty, events changed dramatically when virtually all combat personnel from the Mars Defense Force were asked to retrieve an extraterrestrial artifact from a cave sacred to the indigenous reptilians. Captain K described how over 1,000 men and women were killed in a subsequent battle and only 28 of his colleagues, including himself, survived. This following report originates from Bibliothecaplides.net and this report is as important today as it was when it was written a few years ago. I believe the timelines for Nibiru's return of 2003 and 2012 were deliberately misleading timelines and disinformation put out by the controlling elite. But be warned, we are approaching the real timeline for this coming event. Titled, Is There a Disturbing Hidden Agenda in Global Events? by Len Caston from Atlantis Raising, number 41. An Australian researcher offers a startling explanation for world events. Imagine this scenario. The US government obtains intelligence that hidden somewhere in central Iraq is an actual stargate placed there by the Anunnaki gods of ancient Samaria. This is a device that employs time travel technology and permits individuals and equipment to pass into another dimension outside of the space-time continuum. Once there, it is possible to travel across the galaxy or into another galaxy instantaneously and then pop back into space-time on another planet. 
consider further that the government also learned that Nibiru, the 12th planet, is due to make its return passage through our solar system on its 3,600 year orbit. In this scenario, when Nibiru is closest to Earth, the Anunnaki, the ancient huge humanoid gods of Sumeria who built the Stargate, would, it seems likely, take the opportunity to travel to Earth through that same Stargate and will set up their encampment in Iraq by default. This will have the effect of propping up the current regime. US government leaders know that such an eventuality must be prevented at all costs, so they decide that with the help of extraterrestrial allies, they must invade Iraq and close the Stargate. The Russians, Germans and French, however, having been intimately involved in Iraq's archaeology, know what they're up to and prefer that the Stargate remains open, thus preventing American domination of the world with time running out, President Bush invades Iraq. American scientists raid the museum and close the Stargate, thus frustrating the grandeur's ambition of self-styled reincarnation of Nebuchadnezzar, Saddam Hussein, and making the world safe for the New World Order. Is this the sequel to the movie Stargate? Is it a new episode of the TV series? Is it a new Star Trek movie? No, it is none of these. According to Dr. Michael Seller, it is probably exactly what actually happened. Such a fantastic theory would not be expected from someone whose entire career has been spent in academia, pursuing rather conventional political and diplomatic studies. Dr. Sala, an Australian national, obtained his MA in philosophy from the University of Melbourne and then his doctorate in government from the University of Queensland in 1993. After spending two years as an associate at the Centre for Middle Eastern and Central Asia Studies in Australia, he joined the faculty of the Department of Political Science at Australian National University in Canberra as a lecturer. In 1996, he came to the US and gained an academic appointment at the School of International Service at American University in Washington, D.C., where he remained until 2001. He is currently researching methods of transformational peace as a researcher in residence in the Center for Global Peace at American University. The missing factor, Dr. Salas's Iraq star theory is expounded in a paper written for publication. Several other research papers by him exhibiting what seems to be first-rate scholarship and elaborating on his intriguing views about world events can also be found here. Salah is among those who think that the extraterrestrial presence should be a major factor in all political decisions and actions. Like the proverbial elephant in the room, the alien factor he believes is just too big to be ignored and therefore it seems highly unlikely to him that it is being ignored. But what goes on in clandestine meetings is not public policy. So Dr. Sala brings the subject out into the daylight by reviving the previously obscure concepts of exopolitics, dusting it off and giving it new life and meaning. The exoprefix has become established as a reference to aliens, e.g. exobiology refers to the study of alien physiology and biochemistry. Dr. Sala formulates his exopolitical theory when in his work in international conflict resolutions he became convinced that there was a missing piece some external agency was not accounted for. When he factors in the ET influence, it all came together. In a 10 thousand word research paper titled The Need for Exopolitics Implications of Extraterrestrial Conspiracy Theory for Policy Makers and Global Peace Dr. Sala says the exopolitics can be defined as the policy debate over the choices of governments and populations need to make in formulating and implementing legislative and policy responses to the presence of ETs in human affairs. He claims that exopolitics is actually already 
already been practiced in secrecy by the major world governments. In this paper, though, Dr. Salas gives good examples of how public exopolitics should be conducted, as our government should be doing. He reviews all the sources of evidence of the ET presence to date, and then uses this reported information to try to comprehend the nature of alien intentions. He does this by identifying four possible perspectives and evaluating the strength of the evidence for each category. According to the intruder perspective, the aliens are here for their own purposes and their abduction and hybrid program activities are intrusive and callous to humans concerned. Although they pose no direct military threat, this attitude would tend to justify defense concerns and the development of weapons with which to confront them. Taking the manipulative perspective, a case can be built that the aliens have been manipulating humans covertly since we first appeared here. There is evidence that this has been conducted through their human proxies via secret societies and support of a human controlling elite class. From the helper perspective, it appears that the aliens are here to help us to grow in consciousness and solve our problems. Much evidence supports the view that the ETs play an important role in encouraging humanity to achieve peaceful resolutions of international conflict and in preventing nuclear proliferation and the use of other destructive weapons. And finally, there is the Watcher perspective. According to this view, the aliens are agents of a larger galactic organization and are here to observe a great experiment that may help other planetary societies if we resolve it correctly. These aliens are all powerful and although non-interventionalist, are ready to step in if absolutely necessary. Of these four possibilities, he claims that the strongest evidence supports the intruder and helper perspective, and therefore government policy should actively address both of these. Dr. Sala makes five recommendations. First, we must create the field of exopolitics so that schools and colleges may prepare diplomats for dealing with extraterrestrial presence and also the ETs themselves. This would require highly specialized training. Second, and perhaps most important, he argues for the pressing need for immediate disclosure so that exopolitical leaders can bring the best academic minds all over the world into the problem-solving matrix rather than just those now secretly employed by the government. He says this would lead to a more representative decision-making process in contrast to what the evidence suggests is a restricted decision-making process on the ET presence run by a small number of government officials appointed in a manner which raises serious concerns over their accountability, constitutional status and lack of congressional oversight. It may be true that the military-industrial complex has effective ways of identifying and utilizing brilliant and talented individuals as in a beautiful mind. And furthermore, Dr. Sala claims that they have brain enhancement technology which can raise an IQ by as much as 50 points. But there are obvious disadvantages to operating in a climate of secrecy, fear and intimidation and we are all being shortchanged by this policy. Dr. Salas's position is that only a free and open discussion can elicit the responses appropriate to the incredible complex problem and fabulous opportunities presented by the existence of several alien races on the planet, displaying powers and technology that are thousands of years ahead of us. He believes that waiting for official disclosure will cause us to lose valuable initiatives and opportunities for change and could actually be disastrous. Third, the government must reveal exactly what weaponry and defense measures they have developed for dealing with the alien menace. The military should not be permitted to expand considerable national resources in this effort without congressional and public oversight. Fourth, the government should reveal whatever new technologies they have developed by reverse engineering alien craft and the discovery of new energy sources based on extraterrestrial information. It is strongly suspected that we already have anti-gravity spaceships capable of interstellar flight 
time and or interdimensional travel capabilities, free energy devices that would free us from fossil fuel dependency and other advances that could eradicate sickness and poverty all over the globe. Clearly, it is presumptuous and immoral for a small group of individuals to keep these things under wraps while there is so much misery on the planet. And finally, there must be a concerted effort to develop effective congressional and public oversight of these clandestine activities. As Salas sees it, most observers around the world were upset when the US, as some see it, created its own case for the invasion of Iraq and went ahead without obtaining what they believe was an adequate world consensus, moreover with active opposition from some of our traditional allies. Citing evidence for hidden weapons of mass destruction as a causes Belai and rejecting the failure of UN inspectors to have found such weapons, the US-led coalition quickly overran the Iraqi defences. To Salas, it seems the operation must be aimed at beating some sort of an urgent deadline. If this was all about oil, why the urgency? Dr. Salah is convinced that the pressing need to invade Iraq was based on clandestine exopolitical analysis and decision. He believes that the US, Russia, Germany and France have been aware that the Anunnaki left behind some very high-tech apparatus and possibly weaponry when they abandoned the earth around 1700 BC and that Saddam Hussein had been getting assistance from Russia, German and French archaeological teams for years in an attempt to unravel and perhaps reverse engineer this apparatus, which Salah claims is probably far in advance of any technology we may have obtained from the Greys from Zeta Reticula, who he believes to be our friends. If a European-Iraqi alliance were able to back-engineer this technology and or strike up an alliance with the Anunnaki when they return, Salah thinks then whatever military advances the US has had with its technology, even including anti-gravity craft, would probably disappear and we would quickly become a second-rate power. Basically, Salah is claiming that all political decisions are now exopolitical decisions which must be hidden from the public to prevent the possibility of overthrowing the secret ruling elite. Salah believes that a covert intense struggle is being played out behind the scenes against the backdrop of the ET presence. Earthly political powers are manoeuvring for alliances with superior ET races to gain world domination. The Stargate as Uruk. Salah's opinion that the technology buried beneath the desert sands of Iraq is an actual Stargate has been heavily influenced by the writings of William Henry. Zachariah Sitchkin never entertained the notion that the Anunnaki could have set foot on Earth through an interdimensional portal, although he came very close to that idea in Stairway to Heaven. A primitive version of that concept has been floating around the sci-fi world since the advent of Star Trek in the 60s. Captain Kirk and friends could be beamed down to any planet by dematerialization and rematerialization process. Sitchkin believes that the Sumerian tablets showed the existence of space ports at various places in the Middle East from where the Anunnaki travel back and forth to Nibiru in rocket ships. He wrote that some of the tablets indicated the probable utilization of orbiting crafts as well. But William Henry, with whom Atlantis Rising readers are very familiar, in his recent research paper titled Saddam Hussein, The Stairway to Heaven and the Return of Planet X, makes a compelling case for the existence of such a stargate in Iraq. This paper in turn uses material extracts from his book, Ark of the Christos, the mythology, symbolism and prophecy of the return of Planet X and the Age of Terror. William Henry his essay is of course speculative. He nevertheless takes on an authoritative tone and makes copious references to ancient mythological texts as well as Zachariah Sitchkin's works. The following statement summarizes his argument and is probably one that Dr. Salas was influenced by. The return of this planet centers on the recovery of a technology once housed at Solomon's temple that is used to open the gateway 
linking Earth with far-off regions of space. Recent military and political activity suggests that the world powers are jockeying for position as if the return of Planet X is imminent. The stakes are high. This planet is at the center of a biblical prophecy known as the Day of the Lord. An illustration in his article shows a picture of an ancient Sumerian tablet in which the god Anu, the ruler of Planet X, appears to be going through a gate flanked by two people holding posts or pillars with globes on top. Henry calls these poles splendid shining posts and claims that they represent the stargate in a simplified form. Another Sumerian tablet illustrated in the article shows Gelgamesh going through a similar gate. Gilgamesh was the hero of the ancient Sumerian epic poem, The Song of Gilgamesh, written about 2900 BC. He was the king of Uruk, a city in southern Mesopotamia. He sought immortality by searching for the stairway to heaven and the abode of the gods. Ultimately, he ascended a ladder and went through a gate and entered a new world where he met long dead, Upper Napishitam, Noah, and questioned him about the gods. Dr. Salas believes the Stargate will be found at Uruk, where German archaeologists have been digging for many years at the invitation of Saddam Hussein and have unearthed an ancient city. He thinks that the Stargate may have already been unearthed, but cannot be used because it probably takes about five years of consciousness expansion training before someone can walk through the gate. To view the full transcript, go to my website, endtimes23.com, where I've posted a link. You can find the live link to my website near the end of this video. And finally, June the 8th, 2014, a warning has been issued by Marshall Masters of Yausa.com that Nibiru is nearing, as monitoring of the Nibiru system from surveillance cameras in Costa Rica since 2010 give complete proof Nibiru is increasing in size as it closes in on Earth. To view Marshall Master's warning video titled Planet X 101 Proof of Nibiru, go to my website endtimes23.com where I've posted the link. You can find a live link to my website near the end of this video. Okay, my friends, you're all invited to join this channel by subscribing to End Times 23, which is a totally free subscription service. You're also invited to add me as a friend on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. If you'd like to drop me a line on my blog, by all means do so. Or if you'd like to join one of my circles in Google+, the links are under this video. All this week's news links can be found on my website, endtimes23.com. There's a live link near the end of this video well that's your lot for this week my friends i do hope you've enjoyed the show i'll be back with you in a week's time with another edition of informer news so until then this is your informer signing off friends i'll see you on the flip side